Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sanity Daily in partnership with Breslau.org. Now, this class is given to to be a, a to bring a refuah shalema to my Rebbe, Reb Chaim Kramer. His name is Reb Chaim Menachem Ben Leia. You should have a full full refuah shalema. Kari Mamish. B'sayich shachayli Yisrael. Well, we're going to continue our lessons now. We had our break after Pesach. Hope everyone had a very uh, wonderful Yom Tif and uplifting Yom Tif. Uh, despite all the challenges that we had this year. And, but I f- hope that everyone was able to connect to their Bani Shalaylam in their own way, in their own personal way. Um, which is really what we can accomplish today because we're by ourselves. So our tefillahs and everything we do, we're not trying to impress anybody. The real you is showing up, who you really are. It's beautiful. So now you can really gauge where you are in your Avaita Hashem. So let's learn now. We're going back to Lakut Eitzis, the book of advice. And we're, we're going back to the chapter where we were up to, um, which is uh, Achila, the chapter of eating. And we're up to letter 8, Ches, 8. And the Rebbe says a very beautiful thing. Uh, it's, uh, there are a lot of people, there are people that sleep through their lives. Now, now, I'm not talking about those people that just lay in bed all day. No, we're not talking about those. Those, everyone can understand. We're talking about those that are awake but they're spiritually asleep. Well, there are some people that fell to this spiritual slumber via doing wrongful actions. They did different uh, avarice that they shouldn't have gotten involved in. And that put them to the spiritual asleep. It put them to sleep. And then there are some people that are kosher people, good people. Which means kosher people means that they that they do things honestly and they and they and they try and they try to be Abde Hashem. Rakshin if Achila. But sometimes even good people can fall to the slumber via their eating. Because sometimes we may get involved in eating something. Perhaps the money that I used wasn't exactly right. Perhaps the cash was, eh, wasn't exactly, eh, could be okay. That's what we're talking about. In other words, did I attain the food in a, in a proper halachic manner? Did I... Did I get the food in the proper way? So then the mind, we know that the nesham is in the mind. Right? And uh, when we eat, when we eat, and we're not eating proper food, kosher food, honestly earned money to buy food, so that can put the person to sleep. But if a person eats, that means, that means a person washes his hands properly to make sure there's no tum on his hands. We know that the tum is oiches biyadayim. It rests on the hands. If he washes the hands, right? And the person, and the person's careful on how he makes his brachas. He says word by word. He thinks about the bracha. He does it the correct way, right? As I may upon of, that'll cause him to have an illuminated face. Literally. You see Lechtige Yitten. You see some Yitten that a mom is alive. Hainu Sikhlai. Becomes smart. In Avaidis Hashem, smart. Through his food. So, in other words, see, we think that the food 
is only to bring you, uh, 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 you know, to give you to give you vitality in order to live. That's true, and the body needs food in order to live. There's no question. However, there's so much more that can be benefited by eating, by making the bracha correctly, attaining the food correctly. <laughs> That'll cause the person to have a spiritual uplifting. But if a person's not eating bikedusha, he doesn't care. I washed my hands. I didn't. I did the bracha. Yeah, I said the bracha. I didn't say that. Yeah, didn't like that. Azayah Machel may be royal alive. That causes him to have a bad heart, not a physically bad heart. His feelings of Yiddishkeit. We know that the feelings of Yiddishkeit come in the heart. Right? Maybe Royal Alei. By day is Oivet, upon a Vesichle. It's upon a Vesichle. Then he can, he can, he can lose. He can lose that glow to the face. He can lose that Seichel. Vinnoi for the beginning of Shaitan, that causes him to sleep. I feel that Shaitan Maloila. It could be even to the world. You can see the guy, you know, uh, when we can't go to shul, right? And the guy goes every morning to shul. He drags himself in. He puts on his towels and fill in the And he has a seder. He learns a little bit. And he goes to work. And he, he maybe even go to a seder at night. A night seder. But he's just going through the motions. He's not, it doesn't, it's not affecting him. It's not turning him into a new, to a better person. He's going through the motions. Yeah, like the guy's learning. He's learning Tyre, he does it daf yaimi. He could be, he does, he does whatever it is. But you can see the guy sometimes, you see a guy instead of, instead of davening, he's doing the daf yaimi. <laughs> Wait a second, hold on, hold on. There's a time to daven, there's a time to learn. You don't learn when you're supposed to daven, you don't daven when you're supposed to learn. Right? You get up in the morning, you daven, then you have a seder. You can have a seder before you leave it up and it, it, before you, before your tefillah, and then it's say that of course that's the way you're supposed to do it. If you can do that, right? So the guy is doing his things. He's going through the motions, but he's asleep. See, it doesn't have the thrust. It doesn't have the thrust. It stays in this world. It doesn't go up on high. We try to get our tefillahs, we try to get our, 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 our learning, everything up to bring it up to Shemayim. We don't want it to remain in this world. We want it to go up and high. But it's, it doesn't have the fuel. It doesn't have the fuel, the thrust, in order to take off and to go up to Shemayim. We use an example of a rocket ship. Right? You can have a rocket ship, but if they don't put any fuel into it, it'll stay in there. Right? It has the uh, it has the ability to to blast off and to go into space, but if you don't turn it on, you don't do what you have to do to it. It's going to stay there. It doesn't move. That's our tefillahs. See, we're learning here when you put a little effort in, when you put a little kedusha. How do you get the kedusha? By the bracha, by eating the food correctly. Ah, by doing it that way. That gives you the thrust that's needed to elevate the tefillahs and the and the and the limanat Torah. Amazing. See, the Rebbe doesn't take nachas from this type of person. He has to waken himself from from his sleep. He's not. It's not hard for him to do that, really, because he's doing the right motions. He just doesn't have the motivation in order to, to put the effort into it, to put the energy into it. See, you can't do anything. You can't, you can't help this person unless he starts on his own. If he feels, you know, I'm, I'm wasting my time. I don't feel like uh, the, 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 the Gemara is doing anything. I don't feel my Lima that Torah is doing anything for me. I don't feel my Tefillah is doing anything for me. And he, he realizes that. And he wants to do something about it. That's his awakening from his sleep. 
b'shein lechazum, so he shouldn't he shouldn't swallow up his days chas shalom with nothing. So he can have this puri masi yeshel tzadik yamez by listening to the tzadikim stories. Masi tzadikim, there are so many beautiful books. Uh, my favorite book is Tzipuri Maisi. It's a book that was written by Rabbi Nachman. And those stories are very, very special stories. Because the Rebbe Rabbi Nachman taught us that the rest of the world, he tells stories a little bit different than the rest of the world. The rest of the world tells stories in order to put people to sleep. Rabbi Nachman told stories to wake, to awaken people. To awaken people. Because those stories... Awaken the person from that spiritual slumber that he may have fallen into by eating what he shouldn't have, by whatever he did wrong, whatever it was, whatever he or she did to put him into, into that situation. But by listening to that story and infusing that emuna that the tzipur, the, 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 tzipur, the, the stories of the tzaddikim do for us, give to us, that lifts him up, that gives him that chiyas, that gives him that boost. The person is a boost. <laughs> Fortune is a person that comes to such a stories, to such a tzaddik, that will wake him up so he shouldn't waste his entire life. So again, we're learning, when you eat, of course, eat healthy foods, make sure you buy them properly, make sure you make the right brachas, make sure your hands are clean. Especially today, right? <laughs> okay, but washing our hands with the cup, right? That we're supposed to do to remove the tumor, right? I want to thank everyone for participating in the class. And I want to thank everybody. And I wish everybody should stay safe and healthy and well. And again, uh, if this class is helping you, please share it with your friends and family. And again, this class is a, is for a refuah shalema from Chaim Menachem Ben Leah. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day.